I interviewed uh, Duncan Burt, who's a power grid expert in the, uh, in the UK, about the collapse of the power grid in Spain and Portugal a few months ago. And there, you know, it's, it's kind of a you know, nerdy, uh, technical kind of an interview. So I understand if everybody doesn't watch it. But there, it's really actually very important for Canada because, you know, we just had an election. Prime Minister Mark Carney and the Liberals promised that they were going to build a national power grid. We were going to build out our infrastructure. We we're going to add more generation. And that invariably means renewables. Now, here's why it has to be renewables. Uh, if you're talking about nuclear, as Ontario is, it takes a decade, 15 years, 20 years to build these things. I mean, you just can't get the... It takes a long time. And the small modular, modular reactors that the governments have been uh, touting, we haven't got one. Ontario is going to build the first one in the world. Uh, so, you know, we don't even know if they're going to work. We don't know what they're going to cost and what the cost of electricity will be uh, when they're finally completed. Uh, now, Alberta it wants to do more gas, as does Saskatchewan. Well, the problem is there's a huge backlog of, uh, of combined cycle uh, turbines. And the part to, to, if you want a gas power plant, uh, it might be eight or ten years before you could even get the parts. Because electric, electric uh, generation, electricity generation around the world is expanding so quickly that the manufacturing hasn't caught up yet and there's going to be a big delay. The only way that you can add electricity in a timely fashion to the power grid is with wind and solar and, and you've got to incorporate batteries. And the point that, that uh, Duncan comes back to again and again, I made it, I spelled it out where I, when I said, that the grid you have when you had coal and gas and you know big hub and spoke kind of model that we had for 125 years is a very different grid from the one you need when you have when it's dominated by renewables and here's the point uh, Spain and Portugal their grid had 50 to 80 percent renewables and renewables were blamed when the when the grid collapsed. And it turned out there were a bunch of other reasons, you know, that that, that uh, were it wasn't one problem it was like five or six problems, and it all happened at the same time. It was terrible timing and some error, human error, and all of that kind of stuff. So the the takeaway is we're going to have to add a lot of wind and solar in Canada, but the grid we need is different than the one we have, and we have a, you know, by international standards, we have a great grid. It's low cost, clean. It's reliable, and uh, it's served us it's served us very well. But we're going to need two to three times as much power, and the only way to do that in a timely fashion is with wind and solar. Check that interview out because it, it it's the it's validation of the idea that you can use renewable energy and create a grid that's actually more reliable, lower cost, and more resilient. And I think that's the takeaway. But you have to do things differently. And I worry that as you know, we're trying to speed things up in Canada. We want to do th We want to build big things in a hurry. When you build big things in a hurry, you run the risk of breaking stuff. And that's the lesson from Spain and Portugal. Do it right. Do it right, and you have a great grid. Do it wrong, and you've got a collapsed grid.